Hi there, this is Tejas from Trendline. In this video, we'll be looking at two sectors that are poised to take advantage of strong growth outlook for exports in the Indian manufacturing sector. The two sectors in focus are pharmaceuticals and automotives. We'll look into key drivers of growth for exports in manufacturing and how these two sectors are planning to take advantage of opportunities. In addition, we'll also discuss the capex plans of companies in these sectors and how foreign portfolio investor or FPI inflow and outflow is trending lately. India's manufacturing exports shot up by 44% in FY22. While the jump could be attributed to a low base, it surpassed the FY19 levels comfortably. In the last two years, manufacturing exports grew at a CAGR of 15% against the historical average of 5% to 10%. According to a report by management consulting firm Bain and Company, manufacturing exports are expected to reach $1 trillion by 2028. Question here is, what has driven the sudden increase in exports in the last two years? And why does Bain and Company expect manufacturing exports to reach $1 trillion by 2028? Well, there are several key drivers responsible for this. The first key factor is supply chain diversification by companies worldwide. After experiencing acute supply chain disruption in 2020, global companies started to diversify their supply chain. And this is a good news for India because it is among the top four countries for setting up global businesses. Another key driver is government initiatives that have incentivized manufacturing companies. The production link incentive or PLI schemes help attract large investment across manufacturing sectors, driving not only domestic growth, but also manufacturing led exports. The sectors in focus, pharma and automotives, are allocated around 11% and 13% of total outlay. Another factor driving the Indian manufacturing export growth is India's inherent advantages in several sectors, including pharma and automotives, ranging from cost advantages to research and development capabilities. A few other notable positive trends include high capex-led growth and increased mergers and acquisitions. Let's now dive into a key sector whose exports are expected to grow at a CAGR of 17% in the next six years, pharmaceuticals. India has always been strong in pharma manufacturing due to its low cost of manufacturing, which is 30% to 35% lower than in developed markets. Cost efficient R&D and cheap skilled labor also augment India's advantage in drug manufacturing. On top of this, PLI schemes, strong capex plans and high foreign direct investment are expected to propel pharma export growth. Within the pharma industry, biologicals and bulk drugs in the active pharmaceutical ingredient subsegment are expected to be key growth areas over the next few years. Before we get into pharma companies and their growth plans, let's briefly understand the supply chain of pharma industry. Companies can be widely classified into bulk drug manufacturers and drug formulators. Sun Pharma, Cipla, Dr. Reddy's are mainly drug formulators, whereas companies like Divis Labs, Gland Pharma and Granules India are mainly in the business of drug manufacturing. We will concentrate on bulk drug manufacturers, which are expected to contribute to higher manufacturing exports. With the recent pricing pressure in the US generics market, drug manufacturers are now focusing on different subsegments. One star subsegment is CRAMS contract research and manufacturing services. This is among the fastest growing segments in pharma. Pharmaceutical companies use outsourcing services from low cost providers in the form of contract research organizations or CROs and contract manufacturing organizations or CMOs. This allows big pharma companies to cut manufacturing costs by outsourcing their research and manufacturing activities to cost leadership companies, countries like India. In fact, this segment boasts of higher margins when compared to generic APIs, injectables, and even Indian branded drugs. CRAMS grew at a 14% CAGR from FY16 to FY21 to 1 trillion rupees and is expected to grow at a CAGR of 15% from FY21 to FY26. The other two uh, subsegments expected to drive export growth are the biosimilars and injectable businesses. A biosimilar is a drug that is very close in structure and function to a biologic medicine. A biologic or biologic drug is a medicine made in a living system, such as yeast, bacteria or animal cells. Biosimilars market value grew at a CAGR of 78% between 2015 and 2020 and is expected to continue growing at a CAGR of 15% between 2020 and 2030. 
the global injectable markets has grown at a higher pace compared with the overall global pharmaceutical market through 2016 to 2020. The segment posted a 9% CAGR during the same period and is expected to post 8% CAGR in the next five years to reach $700 billion. To make use of these opportunities, drug manufacturers have increased their capex over the last two years by setting up new plants. Divi's laboratory's capex, for example, is expected to rise 5% in FI23 according to Trendline's forecaster. This drug manufacturer has been increasing its capacity since FI19. Its main focus is growth through cram segment and backward integration to reduce imports of raw materials. Companies like Gland Pharma and Lupin have set their focus on injectables and biosimilar segments. Lupin in particular has invested over $1 billion in R&D over the last four years with investments in areas of biosimilars, complex generics and complex injectables. A notable point here is that these drug manufacturers derive a major part of the revenue from exports, which is expected to rise in the coming years. Companies like Divis Laboratories, Granules India and Jubilant Pharmova get over 90% of the revenue from exports. On the back of a strong growth outlook, all companies in focus are expected to post revenue growth in FY23 according to Trendline's forecaster estimates. Despite a decent revenue growth outlook, Divis Labs and Gland Pharma are trading in the PE buy zone. Coming to the FPI investments in the healthcare sector, FPI outflow has reduced lately in this sector. In fact, in the second half of August, this sector saw the highest FPI inflow of all sectors. The pharma sector underperformed the Nifty 50 by 5% in the past quarter but outperformed the benchmark index by 2% in the past month helped by FPI inflows. Let's now look at another key sectors whose exports are expected to grow at a CAGR of 17% in the next 6 years. Automotives. Exports from this segment are expected to reach $55 billion by FY28 including electric vehicles or EVs. This is mainly due to low cost manufacturing and a large tier 2 and tier 3 supplier base which ensures the availability of automotive components. Recent factors like government led support through incentive schemes like the PLI and an increase in FDI are also expected to aid the growth in this sector. The star segment in the sector is the auto components industry. For the first time ever in FY22, auto components sector saw a trade surplus of about $700 million. Spike in demand, PLI schemes and sharp growth in the electric vehicles segment led to a trade surplus in FY22 and is expected to continue in FY23 as well. The center is trying to create a conducive environment for the adoption of EVs. A $3.5 billion outlay by the government to encourage production and export of clean, te clean uh, technology vehicles and their components is expected to drive expansion of the EV market domestically and also for exports. In addition, uh, EV adoption is expected to increase about 24% globally by FY28 and the Indian automotive sector has an opportunity to drive export growth up to $5 billion through EV and EV components at a phenomenal CAGR of 37%. Three companies in the auto component sector that can tap into these opportunities are Sona BLW Precision Forgings, Samvardhana Motherson International and Bosch. CapEx of Sona BLW and Bosch is expected to rise significantly in FY23 by 22% and 18% respectively according to Trendline's forecaster estimates. Sona BLW is a major player in automotive components and is a direct play on global electrification. It is an automotive technology company engaged in uh, designing, manufacturing and supplying engineered automotive systems and components. The company's revenue from the EV segment stood at 29% in Q1 FY23 against 14% in FY21. This is also expected to go higher with the order book leaning heavily towards EV. Percentage of orders from the EV segment is on an uptrend and in Q1 it comprised 67% of the total order book. The company's revenue contribution from the US market has grown considerably in Q1 FY23 on the back of strong demand. In Q1, it delivered about 46% of total revenue from the US market against 33% in FY22. To add to this, company's revenue is rising year on year for the past five quarters. But high commodity prices, severe power outages and premium freight costs hurt margins in Q1. However, the management guided a EBITDA margin of 27% going forward. Apart from the auto component makers, top auto players are also expected to ramp up CapEx plans in FY23, mainly in the EV segment. 
Tata Motors and Mahindra and Mahindra's capex is expected to rise over 30% in FY23, mainly to increase the capacity in the EV sector. On the back of a strong growth outlook, all companies in focus, including the battery makers, are expected to post revenue growth in FY23. Sona BLW, which is poised well to tap into opportunities in the auto component sector, is expected to post the highest revenue growth of 34% in FY23. Coming to FPI investments in automobile and auto component sector, FPI outflows reduced in July and in the first half of July. Since then, FPI inflows are on the rise for this sector. According to the latest data, FPI inflows stood at 1,911 crore rupees from August 15th to August 31st. So in this video, we looked at two sectors, pharmaceuticals and automotives that can take advantage of rising manufacturing exports in India. We also looked at the star segments within the sectors and companies that are poised to reap benefits going forward with the CapEx strategies. You can find more information about these sectors and companies on Trendline.com. This is Tejas signing off.